basis. Now we'll go on a little bit more to the ethical halachic aspects specifically, and the next speaker is Professor Avram Steinberg, who is known to everyone. Uh, he's Chatan uh, Pras Yisrael, and written the Encyclopedia of Halacha and Medicine, and I know he's dealt with this particular uh, subject over um, the last few years. <coughs> Let me start with a little story. A friend of mine about eight years ago uh, from New York had a daughter with a disease called neurofibromatosis, which is a, a dominant disease, meaning that 50% of her offspring, no matter whether her husband is carrying the disease or not, will carry the gene for the disease and about 20% of the children will be severely affected. She herself just carried the gene, has had a few birth marks, but other than that, was healthy. <clears throat> she was very apprehensive to become pregnant for fear that 50% of her children, male or female, will carry the disease and 20% of them will be severely affected. She went, uh, or rather her father, went to consult with Rabbi Waldenberg, who was still alive then. And Rabbi Waldenberg, based on his opinion that abortion for diseases is permissible, uh, suggested that she should become pregnant, test for the gene, and if it tests positive, he allows to perform the abortion. She did so, and she felt terrible. She was very upset about it. Her father pushed her to this, but actually she didn't want it. And the whole notion of performing abortion was very upsetting to her. At that time, PGD became a medical option. But to the best of my knowledge at that time, there was no halachic ruling of any authoritative uh, rabbi to say whether the whole procedure is permissible or not. And in order to help my friend, I went to Rav Eliashiv. You may say, to begin with, that it probably might have not been a help, because uh, assuming that he is strict, he will say no, and then the whole option is closed. But nevertheless, I did it for myself to understand what the halachic uh, position would be in any case, and whether I'll relate it to him, I would have decided later. And I went to Avel Yashiv and I described to him the procedure, and he right away on the spot said, it's permissible, you can do it. The next question was, what do you do with the affected fertilized eggs who carry the bad gene? You don't transplant it to the woman because you know now that this fertilized egg will produce a sick child, but what do you do with it? So he said, discard it. No problem with that. So that was... I think a, a breaking uh, psaac from the most authoritative uh, poisek in our generation. In his way, he did not explain his reasoning. He hardly ever does it. I have my ideas from a halachic point of view, why should it be permissible? I won't go into it, time is uh, limited. But uh, that was the psaac, and I think by now, most, if not all, the rabbis agree that the procedure per se, PGD as such, is permissible. And the basic inherent question is, what actually is the halachic question at all? The halachic question may bear upon sort of a kind of an abortion, or killing, or murdering, or some of these uh, issues that are being discussed in the, in the wider world, especially in the Catholic uh, points of view. Now, it seems clear that from a Jewish point of view, and I'm saying a Jewish point of view and not the Jewish point of view, I'm not responsible for all positions, but at least there is significant Jewish point of view, that a fertilized egg aged one or two days out of the womb is not a human being, by definition. And hence, discarding it is not killing, by definition. And therefore, once we have said that, we actually open the door for almost free PGD, because why not? What stands 
between doing the PGD upon request and halakha. There are other things to be considered. For instance, the, the danger, the risk that the woman is taking in order to undergo IVF procedure and the repeated cycles. But these are uh, risks that are taken for many uh, reasons and it is acceptable, an acceptable risk. <coughs> So having got to this point, I think that what we need now to discuss is the meta-halachic aspect or the halachic policy at large depending on many variables. There are black, there are white, and there's a whole gray area where uh, decisions have to be made, remembering that even if we made a mistake in our judgment, according to what I presented to you now, we really don't violate any clear, pure halachic uh, position. Now, the spectrum, and I will give you just a few examples of the spectrum uh, based on the examples for this uh, panel. There is the white case, diseases that are single genes that we know one to one that whoever has this gene will be a sick child and there are hundreds, if not thousands, of such diseases that uh, are not within the general biological framework of thinking that it's uh, dubious or doubtful, whether it's tay sachs or whether it's canavans or whether it is uh, cystic fibrosis, serious diseases that we know that whoever has the gene will have will be affected seriously. I think for these diseases, especially if there's already a child born to this family and it's not speculative, that is certainly permissible, if not in a way, even uh, in some way, might be even mandatory to avoid such suffering from the world. We at Charit Tzedek have such a unit, like we heard from Sheba, we have a similar unit at Charit Tzedek. Up to now, we have over 100 children born healthy to, diseases, to, to families who harbor terrible diseases. And they are very happy with the results. And obviously there were no mistakes, so uh, all the children are healthy and the families are happy to have a healthy child. So these are a whole host of uh, serious diseases. There's the other side of the spectrum of physical characteristics, blue eyes, blonde hairs, they are, they are all gene determined. And we can choose children by Design, we can make children who have blue eyes and, and blonde hairs and tall or, or not tall and so on. Obviously, these are the black side of the coin, which I don't think that anyone seriously would consider to enter into such a process and select for such uh, diseases. And uh, not diseases, characters. Problem with characters might become an issue if and when we will be able to detect genetically characteristics which are important to the majority of society. Maybe blue eyes are important to certain people, but certainly not to the majority. For instance, IQ. If one day, and I don't think it will happen because of what we heard, there are so many variables within the genome that probably there won't ever be a single gene, but theoretically assuming that there will be a gene that can avoid mental retardation on the one hand, or can produce superior intelligence, on the other hand, would that be a justifiable intervention based on PGD? But that is really theoretical. There's a whole host of gray area where we are now struggling ethically whether to allow PGD or not. Some of them are diseases which are late onset. And personally, I think that there shouldn't be neither morally nor halachically a difference between a disease that starts a year later, five years, or 20 years, or even 40 years, because the suffering that entails such diseases is very significant, it's uncurable at the moment, and we don't know what will happen in 40 years, whether it will be curable or not. We are judging according to what we see today, and therefore I think that such diseases, whether they are early or late onset, if they are serious enough, are falling into the realm of permissibility. There are other issues. For instance, 
we can create a child who is HLA compatible to a sibling who has leukemia and he has no matching to do a bone transplant and to save his life. Should we create a child that is created not for his own sake, but for the sake of saving his sibling? What psychological consequences it might uh, cause? We at Charlotte Sedek, after a long debate, decided to allow this procedure. And we had already two cases where we saved such a sibling by the parents getting a new child for this purpose, and hopefully this child will be loved on his own, not only as a means to save someone else. Another issue, again, without opening uh, too much discussion on that, is sexing. If someone has four uh, boys and he wants a girl, finally, it's easy to do by PGD. Would that be a permissible act or not? Again, it's debatable, and again, it's open to different opinions. My personal opinion is, that in certain circumstances it should be allowed, based on my understanding that inherently, halachically, we are not doing anything wrong. It is only the psychological, social aspects, and here there are a lot of variables, including psychological variables, that may play an important role, sometimes not less than a physical illness. Thank you. Thank you. There was this this uh, HLA story was very interesting. A few years ago, uh, Time magazine had a front page picture of a, a family that had a baby specifically born in order to uh, help the, uh, uh, the ch a child they had with, with leukemia or with some other disease. And a tremendous debate about whether this is okay or not. And uh, it was sort of strange that people have children for no reason at all, or just them. Uh, but to have a child for a specific reason of helping save a sibling, this created an ethical problem. I still have the slides of, of this uh, cover. Uh, 